Hey everybody, welcome to the random game on shrinking. If you're new to this channel, one of the things I like to do here is open up old sealed games, see what's inside the boxes, and actually play the games, because I believe that sealed games, you know, may be nice to make a couple of bucks, but that's all my games are here to be sealed and to be traded and invested in. They're here to be played. And that's what I want to do is actually play the game. So I open them up and play them. If that's interesting to you, if you'd like to see what's inside, if you're just, you know, you, this way you can have your sealed copy and watch me open mine, if that's interesting to you, and you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so and hit the notification button so you can, you can be notified when I do another video like this, which is usually pretty soon, pretty, pretty frequent. So today the game I have here is called Night's Chase, and it's a time gate adventure that's on the top by the developers of Alone in the Dark, which probably most people have heard of the Alone in the Dark series of uh, survival horror for the PC and I think PlayStation as well. This is a game that was made by the same developers as it says here and published by Interplay, but it's pretty much unknown as far as I can tell. I mean, I guess some people have heard of it, but not too many people, I don't think. And it says here, um, you're William Tibbs, an American law student in Paris. Your fiance Juliet has been kidnapped and transported back into time in medieval France where she's being held hostage. You're the reason for her kidnapping and the key to her rescue. And this is you must use all your deductive skills as well as expert swordsmanship and just decipher the secret language of the Knights Templar. It's another Knights Templar game. There seems to be a lot of those. But it looks like an interesting game. You see there's a lot of swords in the screenshots. And uh, it's, I'm sure it's like action-adventure type, like Lord of the Dark. And I'm a sucker for a time travel game. I just love time travel. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, and it looks like it's for DOS, maybe for Windows as well. It says here on the bottom, it's for DOS 5 or higher, or Windows 95, or Windows 3.1. Which makes me wonder if maybe there's like two different versions on the CD or something like that. But in any case, that's what it is. I'm going to try the DOS version first. This definitely looks like original shrink wrap. It feels like original shrink wrap. And plus, there's a sticker here that's a $7 rebate on top of the shrink, which is pretty much a dead giveaway that it's original. I mean, it could be like someone put a fake sticker on here or something. But if I open this up and we find a coupon for a $7 rebate, then I'll be pretty sure that it's actually, you know, <laughs> original shrink wrap. So let's open this thing up and see what's inside. And uh, you know what? For once, I'm not going to just tear it open. I'm going to actually uh, go and get my uh, big knife and uh, open it that way. So this was actually in pretty good shape, but I, I'd rather keep the uh, shrink wrap on it, especially with the cool sticker on it. So I'm going to try to open it with this knife first at the top and see how... I think it's a one-piece box. I should be able to keep the shrink wrap on. This is what I call my big kahuna knife. Um, oh, I don't know why. Just something I just got used to doing. Let's see if I can get this thing open. Uh, without cutting myself or the box too badly. That's sort of the goal here. And I believe I pretty much got it. There's probably a couple of small things in the corners. Let me see if I can just tear it open now. Uh, it's always those corners. I have to like cut it a little bit here. Again, the danger is really that I cut my own uh, flesh and blood, unfortunately. Or that I just cut the box. That's why sometimes these are just really just trying to tear it. Especially the box is already sort of crushed. Yeah, it's just easier just to rip it open. So now it's open. Let's see what's inside. It's our famous friend, the cardboard insert, which is in every single one of these boxes pretty much. Except for the ones that are complete garbage. Ooh, this is interesting. Okay, nothing else in here. Nothing up my sleeve. I like this though. This is pretty cool. We got some kind of fold-out thing, which I don't know why it wasn't like this. For some reason, it came like that, which I would be concerned. Maybe it was a reshrink or something, but I don't know. Where's that seven dollar coupon? Let's okay. Let's see what this is first. So this is like the history and legend of the Knights Templar, and there's also like some kind of I don't know command card, like reference card. But why is it so? I mean, it's cool that it closes like this, like an arc or something. But why is it so weird? You expect it like to sort of loop around the other side or something? I don't want to break it, but you would think it would go like this. I, I don't know. I don't... I think I just broke it. <laughs> All right, let me, let me leave it alone before I break it some more. What else we got here? We got the CD. Hold this for a second. Okay, good. Good. We have a $7 rebate here, so <laughs> hopefully that sticker on the thing was original. We have a response card, you know, registration, whatever. And then we have the jewel case with a nice uh, side and back. And I've played some of these games, and some of them are not so good. And let's open it up. We have, whoa, it's a very thick manual. The CD here 
looks definitely unmarked. It also looks like there's only about data on half of it. And let's see if I can get this thing out. Okay, it came out pretty easy. Not that thick. And we got this nice manual, which is black and white, but I like these compact ones that fit into the jewel case. They're sort of very cool and easy to store with the jewel case. We strongly recommend you don't play the DOS version with, of Knight's Chase with Windows 95. So it looks like there's definitely two versions, one for DOS and one for Windows. Well, actually, maybe three. Windows 95, Windows 3.1, DOS. If there's three, that's really weird. Probably there's only two. And yeah, that's basically it. So I don't know what this weird thing is. I guess it's the reference card, but I don't know why they decided to do it so weird. Maybe I read the whole manual. I'll figure it out. But anyway, cool packaging, cool game it looks like. And let's try and see if we can get some gameplay footage out to check it out. All right, so here I am running Knight's Gate in DOSBox. And basically it ran completely fine uh, with no, no tweaking or anything like that required. It just works great right out of the box. Now I'm not going to uh, watch the whole uh, intro sequence here. Um, let's see if I can just show you the video at the beginning. All right, here we go. So this is the intro video, um, which I'm not going to show you either, but it's people fighting with swords and... Um, like, it's very small, obviously. It takes a... They give you, for some reason, like, they couldn't record the video in larger than postage stamp size. And also, because loading for the CD, so it takes time to buffer and stuff like that. The graphics are cool, but... We're not gonna watch this. Let's skip ahead and show the actual gameplay. So here's the actual game. Now, basically, it's just like a load of the dark, uh, where you have, like, these sort of tank controls. I'm turning this guy around with the arrow key, walking forward with the up arrow, can walk back with the back arrow. And the interface is very confusing. If I hit enter, then I get all these options. By default, it's on this fighting thing, but really, for an adventure game, you probably want it on this one, which is more like picking something up. So now, if I hit the space bar, it'll try to interact with who's looking up right now. Let's go back to the museum. I don't know what happened, but if you try to leave this area, he says, I have to save Juliet, so presumably there's some kind of task he has to do in there. But it seems like basically, like, similar, obviously the interface and the graphics are very similar to Lone of the Dark, but it's more like an adventure game style, uh, because it's just a little bit slower paced. There's no, like, zombie dogs jumping through the window trying to kill you or anything like that. Um, it's just where you can try to take your time, although... Similar to Lord of the Dark, it has this issue with the camera angles, where you walk around, all of a sudden the camera angle changes, and you're like, what happened? Where did, I, where did I come in from? Where was the entrance? I don't know what happened anymore. Also, things are very small, so like, okay, I, I press space, there's not much interesting in here, but I don't know how you sort of figure that out. I mean, you got to really look at every single thing. It helps to face the right way. Lots of wires. Must be the control box. So basically, I'm not going to, like, play this as if it's a real adventure, because it would take me forever. I'll just sort of show you the very beginning here. So I went to this room, and it's like a display. Nothing really to do in here. I tried, I couldn't figure anything to do. And I guess that goes back outside. Um, again, there's things you can theoretically interact with, but I don't know what they are. And I'm not going to really play for too much. The sound is pretty cool. The ambient noise of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the honking. Now it's like the inside noise of the museum. You can't go in there. You can't go in there. There's some tools here. Can I take a tool? Hey, you! <laughs> Not now. Uh oh. Hey, you! You put that there straight away! <laughs> I like the British accent. All right, I put it back straight away. Um, but yeah, I was. I managed to progress. De Mont Didier. Progress the game a little bit. I'm in some kind of bang the back, like another exhibit room, and then there's a door. If I go in here, and now I'm in some kind of back room area with a computer. This is a ticket office, he says. And then if you go into this back room here, then something will happen. You attention, please. The museum is about to close. So the museum is about to close. <laughs> I Wolfram, deputy to the Grand Inquisitor of Paris. I challenge you, William Chip. <laughs> So, they said the museum is about to close, and now it's, like, literally closed, and, like, you're just stuck in here. So, if you try to leave the room, 
you try to leave this area, you'll see... Oops, come on. Get out the door. Now there's all of a sudden all these, like, uh, security lasers, and they're not just, like... You would think they're just, like, some kind of, like, electric eye beams but I think they're actually lasers, and they actually kill you, <laughs> so... You're supposed to find some way to, to survive that, um, and you, you can start looking around and you'll discover things. Like, I, I look here, and uh, here's just the ticket office. But I know I did find some stuff. I found a remote-controlled catapult. I don't know what the heck that's good for, but I, now I have a remote-controlled catapult. If I go on this side and look, I found a CD-ROM, the Templar's Tale. I said you the Templars, obviously, in this game. Um, and I looked in here the desk. I don't think I found anything here, but somewhere over here I found a book or something like that when I played it the first time. I mean, it's 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 an adventure game, basically. Books, 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 useless. But somewhere I actually did find something that said it was a book where... It was in here? No. Somewhere in this room, and I don't remember where it was, there was a book where it said something like you can use a fire extinguisher to, uh, you know, to help illuminate electric eye beams or confuse them or something like that. Here, I found a magazine. So now if I go to my inventory, I can... It's really... Somehow it moves really fast and it's hard to control, but theoretically I can get to the magazine and then I'll read it. Ah, the old CO2 trick. Imagine the sad look on the curator's face on the Silk Museum in Lyons where he discovered several pieces of priceless 7th century fabric disappeared. Apparently the burglars hit after closing and then simply use CO2 foam from museum fire extinguisher to disable an utterly foolproof alarm system. So, I mean, obviously that's what I'm supposed to do, find some kind of fire extinguisher, although I don't know where they are. So no use about my girlfriend, I guess that is. Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Skip, skip this. Using a fire extinguisher. That's clever. Yeah, so they give you a hint, but I had to find that magazine in some really weird place. I don't know, it was under the table. I don't know, you know, how you're supposed to know to look there. And then I, I have to find a fire extinguisher or something. So I'm not going to play this, but you get, you get the idea. It's basically an adventure game in 3D where you can, you can die, you can get killed. And uh, I'll try to come back at some point and play this through. But it looks, looks like it's probably a fun game. So I'm curious if anybody here has played it, if you have any thoughts or any uh, comments or anything like that. Um, please leave it in the comment section. Let me know if you've actually played this game. Oop, I went to the action mode by accident. Let's go back to the look. Please let me know if you've actually played this game and uh, what you thought of it. And uh, hope to see you again in the next video. Please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Thanks a lot.